It's been a rough year for Hollywood at the box office in 2024. Here we are, it's the middle of October. You still got two and a half, half months left to go. And um, the only bright spots have really been from Disney with Inside Out 2, which has done, I think, somewhere around $1.6 billion. And Deadpool and Wolverine, which has done somewhere around $1.3, $1.4 billion. Other than that, it's been a struggle. Now, what I'd like for you guys to do in the comment section down below is um, tell me what has been, in your opinion, the biggest disappointment at the box office in 2024. And while you're doing that, if you would, please take the time. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. Um, smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Also, too, another way you can help out the channel, help support the channel, is uh, hit that subscribe button. And for everybody, both returning viewers and new viewers, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for showing up. Now, I'm with the video. So, Joker. Vale et du. Or I'm just going to call it Joker, point, uh, Joker Part 2. Uh, it's been a big disappointment. If you look at the scores here on Rotten Tomatoes, this is one of those times where the critics and the audience both say, um, this movie stinks. Not to mention the fact that I think I read somewhere that Cinnamon Blend gave it a, a score of a D or a D plus. So, yeah. This, this one is a, a, a big ouch for Warner Brothers Discovery. Now couple of things with this movie. First of all, I haven't seen it. I'm waiting for it to come out on Max. I'm already paying for Max. There's already things I watch on Max. So I'm waiting for this thing to come out on Max where I can watch it at a time when there's nothing else on TV to watch. And um, then and only then will I check it out. So everything you see here is my opinion based on what I've read and found in the media. So, Cosmic Book News, Matt McGloin. This was uh, put out there a couple days ago. Joker 2 box office crumbles, loses number one spot. Yeah, it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> Let's give a big round of applause to Todd Phillips and David Zaslaw for Joker 2, which has absolutely crumbled and lost the number one spot at the box office in less than a week. Ouch. A sequel to the billion dollar movie that cost four times more is also the biggest comic book movie bust of all time when gross is factored in, opening even less than Mar the Marvel's blunder, the Marvel's. Now that's quite a feat. If you open even less than the Marvel's, that, that is, that's really bad. If you can believe it, Joker 2 also opened less than Sony's Morbius. <laughs> like how he puts it in here, hey, it's joking time. Now, Todd Phillips, who was the director on the first Joker movie, and keep in mind, the first Joker movie, when it came out in 2019, it had a $50 million budget. $50 million. So what did David Zaslav at Warner Brothers Discovery do? Well, he said, well, first of all, the first movie did a billion dollars, so we got to do a sequel. And not only are we going to do a sequel, we're going to quadruple your budget. We're going to give you $200 million for this movie. Now, to David Zaslav's credit, he did want to film it in London where, you know, you can get some tax breaks, reduce that budget number a little bit. But Todd Phillips said, nah, we're not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to film around Los Angeles. <laughs> so much for saving money. Now, it's also reported here in this article by Matt McGloin, um, Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix each received $20 million to do this movie. And then Lady Gaga, for her part as Harley Quinn, 
got a $12 million payday. That's $52 million. That is slightly over what it costs to make the first movie. While we're joking around, the big joke is that, that as of Wednesday, Joker 2 dropped out of the top spot at the box office. This happened this past Wednesday. The Wild Robot, an animated movie, took home $1.2 million, which came out two weeks ago, and Joker 2 fell down to the number two spot just behind it, also at $1.2 million. There was about a $800 difference between the two movies at the box office. That sounds like some, um, some election results there. <laughs> Just saying. For the upcoming weekend, the clown will take the clown will take the number one spot at the box office, but it might be Terrifier 3, which it, it did. Terrifier 3 did take the top spot at the box office. In fact, you go here to the numbers. Terrifier 3 did 18.3 million to Joker to Joker. Twos, 7.055 million, which is a massive 81% drop. But what that basically says is, is that the fans that showed up for the original Joker back in 2019, they decided to stay home. And I can't, can't say as I blame them. Now, what's even worse is, is that Terrifier 2 is reported to have a $2 million budget. So if you take the normal, we'll call it two and a half times the budget, which is $5 million to make money for Terrifier 3. Well, guess what? It made some money, folks. So far, it's made about $13 million. Whereas Joker 2, it's going to take a huge loss for Warner Brothers Discovery. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, because in another article over on Cosmic Book News, published, on, published by Matt McGloin, the finger pointing's already started. It's his fault. It's his fault. It's his fault. The blame game is now happening with Joker 2 massively bombing, not only at the box office, but with both critics and fans. Already covered the critics and fans part. Following the first flick's billion dollar blockbuster, big things were expected from Joker 2. However, as we all know, the joke's on us. And it wasn't what anyone expected, which may have been intentional. How, how could it have been intentional? Joker 2 opened to 37 million and change its opening weekend, first weekend out of the gate, a far cry from the first movie's nearly $100 million opening back in 2019. The original cost only 50 million to make, whereas the sequel's a massive $200 million budget and needs to make 450 million theatrically just to break even. I would disagree with Matt there. I think it's going to have to be somewhere between 550 and 600 million. And that's not even including what they spent on marketing, which was probably about $100 million. So you guys can do the numbers. It would have to do a ton of money at the box office to, to just break even. To put things in perspective, the combined pay for Phillips, I already covered that. Now, here's where it gets interesting. According to a report from Variety, director Todd Phillips is to blame in what sounds like a big case of Phillips' ego getting in the way. So what happened with the first Joker is that it almost didn't get made. Reportedly, the studio was against it, and it was even reported that Jared Leto, who played the Joker in the Suicide Squad, the first Suicide Squad movie, not the second one, tried to stop the film from getting made. It's safe to say Phillips was none too happy. When Joker was released, it blew away expectations. So with Joker reigning in a billion, apparently Phillips was given the keys to the kingdom, that is apparently where things started to take a turn for the worse and headed south. Two years after Joker was released, 
would also see the producer on the first Joker depart from Warner Brothers and with Phillips, Bradley Cooper. I don't know how Bradley Cooper ties into all this, but now that's interesting as Cooper starred with Lady Gaga and WB's The Star is Born. What happened? Yeah, what did happen? Somebody tell me what happened. That was an open-ended question. That's not answered in this article. Fast forward a year or so later, Joker 2 started production right when James Gunn and Peter Safran took over DC Studios. Well, apparently Gunn and Safran had no say in Joker 2. As pointed out by fans, Joker 2 didn't have the DC Studios logo at the start of the film. And Gunn recently replied to fans on social media that every film and character after will be DC Studios. Hmm. In memory serves, I, I do think every DC property has had the DC logo in some way, shape, or form at the start of the film. Even going way back to like Batman 89, I believe. Variety also points out that Todd Phillips was asked about Gun and Saffron by Collider. When asked if the production process changed when the pair succeeded DC head writer Walter Hamada, or if they had any input, Phillips replied, with all due respect to them, this is kind of a Warner Brothers movie. Huh? Last I checked, uh, the Joker was a DC property that was owned by Warner Brothers. So yeah, he's not wrong, but he's also not right. If you get what I'm saying, if you pick up what I'm throwing down here. As the article notes, Phillips just had given DC the middle finger. There was no DC Studios logo. Okay. You could also probably even argue that maybe Gunn didn't want his new DC Studios attached to the Joker as Joker 2 is so bad. Right, he says Gunn and Saffron were there for the first director's cut screening at the studio, but apparently didn't give notes or were not asked. However, Gunn and Saffron didn't bother attending the premiere. It's also said that WBD CEO David Zaslav met with Phillips and wanted the sequel filmed in London where they could have saved about 20%. However, Phillips overrode him and said no, and they ended up filming in Los Angeles. It's further said WB didn't want Joker 2 to premiere at the Venice Film Festival, which saw it get killed by critics. However, Phillips balked at that too and apparently demanded Joker 2 first get released at the festival. This is amid no test screenings, which Phillips also refused to do, states the article. So the sequel that nobody asked for was already having an uphill battle to even come close to making money at the box office, it sounds to me like Todd Phillips had no interest in seeing this movie being a success, either critically or financially. He was just given $200 million to go and do something. Which... Um, I wish somebody would give me $200 million to go and do something. No one can get through to Todd, one source said, to be directly involved with the film, film, film fills and variety. And the one thing about Jenner stuff, if you don't listen and pay attention to what the fan expectations are, you're going to fail. So there you have it. Joker 2. Doomed to Fail, the sequel that nobody wanted. So, what do you guys think? Again, comment down below. While you're at it, please take the time to give me a thumbs up, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video, and with that, I will see you guys in the next one.